What's up guys, Ryan here. So today we're going to kick off a new video series. It's going to be talking about the history of the special vehicle team. So this video is going to be from specifically 1993, which was when SVT started, all the way up to 1995. So I hope you guys enjoy. Although the special vehicle team was officially started in 1992, you can trace the roots all the way back to the early 1980s. There was a preliminary group of Ford engineers known as Special Vehicle Operations, or SVO. Their main focus was to provide performance parts to aid Ford's racing programs in the SCCA, Trans Am, and IMSA series. They never really focused on production cars though, but they, only, they did make one, which you may have heard of, the Mustang SVO. It followed a simple formula, take an existing mass-produced car, aka the Mustang, upgrade the powertrain, suspension, and aesthetics to satisfy the enthusiast market, all at a price point that won't break the bank. If you look up what SVT stands for on the official Ford Performance website, you'll find a long paragraph explaining what SVT engineers strive for with every vehicle. What this means is that SVT's goal is to, number one, make performance cars that will tear up a track but won't beat you up as a daily driver. Number two, the car should be perfect straight from the factory with no mods necessary. And three, to provide outstanding value for performance cars that won't break the bank. In my opinion, this is what separates SVT from all the other performance branches in the auto industry. With every product, you get great power, great stability, great handling, pretty good looks, and all at a price that won't break the bank. So with that said, let's get started. The Special Vehicle Team released its first two models in 1993, the SVT Cobra and the F-150 Lightning. The first year for the SVT Cobra was also the last year for the beloved Fox Body Mustang. Upgrades from the standard GT included GT40 cylinder heads, larger vented front and rear disc brakes, as well as a Borg Warner T5 transmission. On the outside, the front fascia was restyled. A unique rear spoiler was added as kind of a hybrid between the LX and GT spoilers, plus 17-inch alloy wheels. These upgrades allowed the Cobra a 0-60 to 60 time of 5.9 seconds and a stopping distance from 60 of 140 feet. Now that's certainly not great by today's standards, but for the, the early 1990s that was pretty good. Only 4,993 were ever produced, only in a coupe with black, red, and teal being your only color option. If the standard Cobra wasn't enough for you, you were in luck because SVT also made a Cobra R. Only 107 were ever produced, only in red. The R version got rid of any creature comforts offered in the regular Cobra, so like the radio, the back seats, air conditioning, even the sound deadening materials that done away with, even the front fog lights. The suspension was heavily upgraded to make the R track focused. It used progressive spring rate coils and Coney struts all the way around. The brakes were upgraded, but the engine was left untouched. So if you ever find yourself having wet dreams of the new GT350R, just know that it might not exist had it not been for its Fox body grandfather. Moving on to the other original SVT, the F-150 Lightning. This truck was produced as a competitor to the GMC Cyclone and the Chevy 454 SS. The GMC Cyclone was kind of a oddball pickup truck though that never really appealed to the mass markets and the 454 SS, well that was only good in a straight line. And so the SVT engineers decided to make a pickup truck that would be good at the drag strip but also good on a track. So they beefed up the suspension, they beefed up the engine. They actually made the truck f faster than a Mustang GT of the same model year. I mean, how crazy is that? It's a pickup truck and it's faster around a track than a Mustang GT. It had a 0-60 to 60 time of 7.2 seconds and a stopping distance from 60 in 140 feet. That's pretty good for a pickup truck. You could have it in any color you wanted so long as it was black, white, or red and it was only produced in this version from 1993 to 1995. 
1994, the new SN95 platform was released. So, the special vehicle team had to adapt their Cobra to this new platform. About 6,000 were made in 1994, a 1,000 of which were convertibles offered only in the color red. These convertibles were replicas of the 1994 Indianapolis 500 official pace car. The standard 1995 Cobra remained unchanged from 1994. However, 1995 witnessed the return of the Cobra R. So just like the R from two years ago, the 95 focused on upgrade suspension and weight savings. For example, it didn't have fog lights. Instead, that hole was used for air intakes. Yes, I know, you thought the Hellcat Charger slash Challenger was the first to do that, but no, the 95 Cobra R did it first. This Cobra R was given a 5.8 liter V8, up from the standard 5 liter. It had been reworked to push 300 horsepower and 365 foot-pounds of torque. This allowed a 0 to 60 time of 5.2 seconds, and a 60 to 0 stopping distance of 109 feet. Both were personal best for a Cobra. Only 250 95 Cobra R's were ever produced. White is the only color option. That concludes part one of this video series. Look for part two coming up within the next couple of weeks. Thank you guys for watching.